What's up guys? I'm Tyler. And I'm Brittany. And we're Wallace Farm and Sawmill. Today we're going to be sawing an oak log into two by eights because we are making a raised garden bed for our fall garden. That's it guys. She said it all right there. Today's video premise is going to be around two things that we love doing. And that's one, sawmilling. Of course, if you're on this channel, you know we like sawmilling. We do it for a living. And number two, I'm just going to throw it under a blanket hat of homesteady type things because we want to get to a point eventually where we're raising a lot of our own food and stuff, right? And we do garden a lot. We had corn and t tomatoes and potatoes and tons of other things, green beans. We did a bunch of stuff earlier in the springtime. And then summer, we finished up building our house. We had projects and projects and projects come along. Sawmill was busy. We just let that stuff go to the wayside. Yeah. So we got to get back on the channel, guys, and get you guys to join along with us as we finish out building the more homesteady part of this homestead. We got to do the we got to start raising the gardens again. We got to start uh, raising some food animals, stuff like that in the very near future. So she's got some big plans for uh, some chickens and maybe some quail. So we're going to go that direction very soon. But today, let's get these garden beds done. We want, if you see behind us, I know you've seen the house and stuff back behind us. Porch has already started, so we're already working on that. Um, I will do an update on that soon. But it's a blank slate, blank field. We got we got to get some infrastructure in. Like we want to put some raised garden beds, some blueberries, like all kind of things we got planned out. Let's get let's take care of the garden beds. We're gonna find us a nice oak log. We're gonna cut some two baits. We're gonna put them together and show you guys how to make your own raised garden bed. So we finally found our oak log. We're going to take it up here to the sawmill and get it sawed up. All right, guys, we're about to get this one set over onto the sawmill. The major portion of this video is not necessarily going to be sawmill, and it's going to be putting together the, uh, the raised garden bed, but sawmilling will be part of it for us because we have a sawmill so you know homesteading and sawmilling they go hand in hand sometimes because you can take this oak log uh for example this is a post oak white oak um log and you can turn it into a usable product pretty much immediately depending on what you are wanting to do so it's kind of nice to have a uh sawmill every now and then isn't it Britt? it really is comes in handy. handy yeah <laughs> same time Anyway, uh, let's get this guy rolled over onto the sawmill. Britt, I think you can handle that one. I'll do the camera work over here. Alright. This is about like a, I don't know, what is it, 15 inch log probably. It's not huge, not huge at all. If you need me to come turn, I will. Look at there. Thing about rolled, it set one roll and she almost went on. The only thing about that one is it's uh, such a hardwood that the can't hook doesn't want to grip bite in does it all right guys i'm gonna roll this on over into position and i'm gonna set the uh camera up and we'll get some shots of getting this cut down i'm thinking two inches thick by eight inches wide that is perfect right there Britt. so we're gonna shoot for some two by eight so i'm thinking um, we'll get six or eight out of there for sure we're gonna go true two inches by eight inches so I think we'll end up with, you know what? I'll say we get 10. What do you think? Six to 10, something like that. Six to 10. That's a broad spectrum, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> She's just trying to win here. I'm going to say we get 10, though, for real. I think I think we can get about, squeeze 10 out of there, off the side cuts and everything. So let's get it. We're already warmed up. We've been saw milling all day. This is actually at the end of the day. So we're just going to go get our water turned on to the right, set. Looks like we're gonna be starting out in a cut around 17 and a half inches.
And just like that, guys, we're over here set up. We're about to cut these to length and width. And we're going to start assembling these. So you can see right here, twist that one up for me. That right there is a true two inch by eight inch wide white oak timber. So that's what we're going to use. Now you could use whatever. I'm sure some people use treated timbers or any other kind of timber. Because let's face the facts here. Eventually this rots and we replace it. So I'm not worried about it. Uh, if it rots in five years, then I'll slide it back and put a new one on and rebuild it. No big deal. So um, let's get to assembling now. What we're planning to do is cut these to length and width, and then we're going to use some torque screws to shoot them together. Right, guys i got one four footer marked out here we'll get the other four footer to this side got to be careful trying not to pinch and whatnot here so i'm gonna try to just let that one fall if it's all zip on through it worked out good now we got a square edge here from that cut we already we've squared the end over there already we're gonna come out here mark it at four Square all, cut this little end off, and then we'll have one box ready to assemble. All right, I'm kind of mocking them up out here, getting them into somewhat of a position. Our ground's relatively flat, so no big issue there. And what I'm gonna do, I'm not using any corner pieces. Some commercially available timbers you buy are inch and a half, right? And they don't have enough uh, structure or one by sometimes people use to do what I'm about to do. But since I'm using true two inch on hardwood, we're just running four and a half inch screws without putting anything in these corners they won't be needed for what we're doing because we're building these heavy out of a heavier type material but if you cut you a two by four eight inches long on your standard store-bought material if you don't have access to this you can put that standard two by four here in the corner and that gives you something else to screw to so instead of just screwing in in grain here you could also screw here into the two by four and here i don't believe i'll need it because of the way that i'm building these but that's an option for you guys out there that are doing these without installing material like this. Okay, I'm gonna try to hold this together, keep it up square and even. Bottom square and flush. Let's send this one home here. All right, we'll do that on all four corners.
All right, guys, that marks the design of it out right there. So now we need some dirt. And we also need to try to find something real quick to block out that grass as we add our dirt on. Cardboard's a good working thing. Some type of paper. I actually have some landscape fabric I might use. So let's figure out what I got on hand and we'll go with that. Okay, so we ended up finding some cardboard we had around the farm and we wet it, pulled all the tape off and we're gonna use that as a weed barrier under the bottom. That prevents the grass that we're setting up on top of from easily coming up into the garden. Hopefully this will kill out or the grass will die out underneath it before uh, it ever you know, becomes an issue up through it. So now let's go get some dirt. Uh, I've got some topsoil in the back field. I'm gonna put a little topsoil in here and then I have some compost I made last year that I'm gonna top it off with. Heading back here to get our dirt. It's hard to see. Look at this little spike right here in the field. Just watch it. Just come back here to get some dirt from the back field. See if I can get closer. All right, so I got that dirt in, got it broke up, spread around. Now, that's a little over half. So now we're gonna do like two and a half, three inches of a better um, soil, such as some compost I already have. So I'm gonna go over, gonna grab some compost, bring in, dump it in here, and we will continue this video in the morning, guys. So we gotta take a break this evening, so let's get to it. Okay guys, off camera a moment ago, I went and got one scoop of my compost and I cleaned it up and set it in here. So now Miss Brittany over here is going ahead and digging in a couple plants. So for our fall garden, we're gonna do a little bit of, uh, let's see, we got collard greens. I think there's one, two, three, six of those. And then there's six cabbage plants and three broccoli plants down here. I think we can fit everything in here. It's pretty good spacing. I do like the four foot bed because of the spacing. Um, some people will, may or may not like that. I feel like you can always reach to the center on a four foot bed. So that makes it a little easy. Um, but yeah, we're just trying to get ready for a fall garden. It takes a little bit to get a fall garden down here in Mississippi going because, well, the heat stays for so long. Uh, we're in latter part of September. Now, what is say the 20th? 19th or 20th anyway guys it's just it's still hot i mean we're not getting a break yet we're going to, have to water these real good here in a little bit but that's basically it you can see our little cabbage plants there we have a luckily for us here we have a nursery that's not far um down the road here that uh they got really good prices you can get a three pack of uh collard they got collards cabbage like all kinds of stuff and anyway most of them are like i think i paid a dollar 99 for a three pack so like what was it 60 60 something cents a piece it's pretty cheap pretty cheap and especially when you're last second like us um it comes in handy for it to be cheap and be able to go ahead and get them in there but guys that's what we're doing we're putting the final touches here i'll get you a little clip in a moment once you get some all planted we'll put a little water to them and we'll close this guy out, but I figured you guys would really like to see something different and something you can do with your uh, gardening. And if you have a sawmill, you can do this right here. So, um, and even guys, for the ones of you out there that don't have a sawmill, I am positive somewhere locally to you there is a sawmill. And uh, I mean, you could have bought these boards for me. I don't know, I'd have to price them, but. It wouldn't have been much. I mean, your local sawmill will probably sell you this raised bed kit, basically. All you gotta do is cut it and put it together for probably less than a hundred bucks. All right, guys, that's gonna close this one out. We're gonna 
let that water sink in we wet them that compost has a tendency to be very uh it's got a lot of air in it so when you first put it in and it's fluffed it, it takes a minute for it to absorb but it's not near as much water as you think on there we'll give you an update on that in a couple of days but for now we got one bed started our goal is to put three of these in a row we're going to put three foot between them both directions on the side and in the width we're going to put three in a row and two wide so we're going to get six of these boxes out here and that's the plan so so also i want to make a note for you guys out there that don't have tractors or stuff like that and you know the ability to break ground i mean this is an easy system to throw in behind the house in a small backyard area and you can raise your own food so there's no negative there all right guys that's going to complete it for us i wanted to show you guys a little something different a little more homesteady we do want to do some homestead stuff we've just been so busy with the sawmill back behind us over there that we haven't been able to work in the garden stuff lately and uh porch builds house builds all kind of things guys so i wanted to show you that i hope you can take from that glean from that what you will and maybe you can go out there and build your own little garden box or raise bed and raise some food it's never a bad idea these days i put too much additives in your food so we're, we're gonna combat that but anyway what you got Britt? uh don't forget to check us out on patreon um and our t-shirts oh yeah got, got, his on too. got mine on today too so that's a link in the description below to her patreon and there is a link in the description below to the bonfire t-shirt sale site that hosts our uh t-shirts um yeah join along buy some help rep the brand yeah thank you guys for supporting us <laughs> yeah we appreciate that guys but until next time see ya